Money yourself, boy, innit? Yeah, 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 yeah. So mm. fact, this is this is the reason, this is the real reason why you bring him on, yeah. <laughs> Want to keep the self connection strong. So peace. Hey. Come on, my guy. And welcome to another episode of Beyond 92. My name is Femi Ilis Sanmi, and I'm joined by my good friend and co-host Jamal Fyfield. It's a show where we cover all things National League, from results, latest news, and things surrounding players. I'm joined today by a good friend of mine. You know, he's been in this division for a couple of years now, experienced defender. Now he plays for Hartlepool United, and they've been on a decent run recently. So we'll get into all of that. I'd like to welcome you, Manny Onorise. Welcome, Manny. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, guys, man. Welcome to the show, man. How's, how's life, Manny? How's your season been? How's everything? It's, it's been okay, you know? So um, we started off really well. Like, we were flying start of the season, that first month. Um, and then we hit a patch where we had a few players injured. And, like, we couldn't really stabilise. And we had a few players come in on loan and... It just didn't click the same way things did um, to start of the season. So we hit a patch where we were losing a lot of games. We weren't really drawing much or winning. And now we've started to pick it up again. Um, we've got a new manager. You know, when you just get that little boost of life and the players are reacting well to it. So we've started a little run now. And yeah, so it's, it's been all right. It's been up and down and as most seasons are, isn't it? So, but yeah, it's been decent. Yeah, you've got the great legend, um... Kevin Phillips, you know, I think everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows the career he's had. Yeah. You know? How is that, like, walking in every day into, into training and just seeing him and how does he move? How does he act as a manager? Like, Because, yeah, he's a legend, man. <laughs> really, really good, you know. Like, really good. Even from, like, the first meeting he had with us when he took over, he said, look, like, I'm not going to be one of them men that are like bragging over what I've done in my career. Like, obviously I might talk about it to help benefit you, but I'm not going to be saying, oh yeah, like I played for this and I played for that and looking down on you. He said like, I'm, I'm a positive guy. And everyone just like really responded well to him. And he's on the strikers. Obviously he was a striker himself. So it's like, he's taking the pressure away from the defenders and he's more on the strikers, but he's really like positive. Anything you do wrong, he's just like, okay, that's fine. What can you do to do it better? Like he's not, negative in any sort of way like he's very very positive so it's like it's been really good like walking in with him how was how have you found living so far away from home obviously you're from southeast now i've lived not too far away in gateshead but hartlepool is a little bit further how is it for just trying to explain how it is for a london boy to move away so far to play to, to play his trade Ah, uh, it's tough. Like, honestly, it's it's tough. Um, I feel like when I first moved up, so when I got the call to say, yeah, you're moving to Hartlepool, I've, I've lived in Rotherham and Doncaster before, so it's up north. So yeah. I thought, oh, okay, like, it's not too far um, further than I was, isn't it? It's like two hours away. When I searched on the map, it said five hours away from London. <laughs> I'm thinking, ah, oh. like, and then telling me I need to make a decision in, like, 48 hours, like, if I'm going or not. Yeah. I'm just like, mm, like I'm chatting to, to my missus and whatnot, like, can we make it work? So she's from Bath, like, family's from Bath. I'm from London, she's from Bath. But then it's like a triangle, London, um, Hardyport, and then Bath. So, like, each distance is five hours away from each other. Oh. Like five hours to Bath, five hours to London. So we're thinking, like, how are we going to make it work? So when I first signed, I didn't come back home for, like, four months, mm. three months. So I didn't see my, my, my parents and my parents didn't see, I got a little one, so they didn't see their, their grandchild. So it was, it, it was a bit tough. And then I was getting flights to start off with because I couldn't hack the, the five hour drive. I was getting flights down to, to Bristol and, and whatnot. But 
it's it's tough. It's tough, man. If yeah. I'm being honest, it's tough. But at the same time, there's a positive in every, in every situation. So, like, being away from London, it just clears your mind. There isn't that London traffic. Um, no no friends calling you out, oh, let's go this and let's go that. It's just, like, you're just zoning the focus on what you need to do. So, like, at the same time, it's been, it's been like, good. Oh, for sure, for sure. You you said you've done you've done a few flights. I think in my two years at Gateshead, I probably went home four times, twice at Christmas, and and the rest of it just when I had to because that drive is crazy. Even the train, the train's like three and a half hours. Mm. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. But I love the fact that you made that decision because sometimes you've got to go where you're wanted first of all. But also when you're trying to get to a place, get to a certain peak of your career. You're going to go wherever you can, you know. So hats off to you. Because there's a lot of players that actually don't like living away from home. Mm. They really don't. They really don't. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy because <clears throat> obviously we got you guys next weekend. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to get back. I need to get back to London as soon as possible. <laughs> but all the trains are cancelled. Uh... So I don't know how I'm going to get back, but I need to find a way to get back. And I was looking at the drive and it was like five hours. So what you're saying is true. It's mad. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm glad that you've you figured things out and, and it's working out for you over there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I want to take it back to to, to, to the beginning, yeah? Because, man, I met you when you was at Brentford, didn't it? Yeah. So obviously you was at Brentford, um, come through the youth team and then... Fast forward, I'm going to fast forward the story. You end up coming on loan to Dagenham and Redbridge. And then it's like you built a relationship with that club. Does that make sense? Yeah. How many times have you signed for them? Uh, I think, I think three times. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so talk to me about um, your experience. Obviously, look, we know you're a hard level player, mm. but... If you sign for a club three times, there's definitely an affection there. Yeah. You know? So talk to me about your time there and your affection for the club. Yeah. So um the whole love relationship I would say started. So I was at I was at Rotherham at the time. And I remember I went on loan to Cheltenham for a second time. And my second loan at Cheltenham didn't go as well as my first loan did. So then the next move for me, I was trying to get another league loan. And then transfer window closed and nothing came up. So I heard like Barnett was interested in, you know how his team's interest, nothing came up. So the next thing was stay at Rotherham and not play or go, go on loan to the National League. And back then, at my age, I was just like, I've done well in League Two. I want to stay in the league. I don't want to go National League. Like, but then it got to a point where I was almost depressed, like going into training every day and not playing. Like Saturdays didn't feel like Saturdays anymore. Like waking up at um on a Saturday thinking this is match day, it weren't match day, it was just like I weren't in the squad, I weren't playing at Rotherham, weren't even getting the bench, weren't even getting a sniff. So then I, I just got to a point where I needed to go out alone. And then Dagenham came in. But back then I was like as I said, I was depressed, but I was thinking, am I even good enough? Like I went through a phase where I was thinking, am I even good enough to play football? Am I what I think I was? You know, one of them questions when you question yourself. So then when that Dagon opportunity came up and like back home, I moved back in with my parents and everything, I was just like, you know what, like I need to get out and play. And I remember like my first two games at Dagenham, um, the, the manager at the time, Peter Taylor, uh, played against Dover and I done well. And I think we won. We played against Harrogate, done well, we won again. But before then they hadn't won like a few games in a row. So it was like a massive boost to the club and like the manager messaged me after the game saying, you're a heck of a player, you're this, that, that. And it was just like them words that you haven't heard in a long time when you've been questioning yourself, that am I even good enough to play football anymore? And being depressed and then getting told, bro, you're, you're good enough, like you're more than good enough, like you shouldn't be playing at this level. And then that Dagenham and the fans and how they talk to, to me, like it was just like, wow. Like just being in that dark place and Dagenham made me fall in love with football again. Like, I didn't see myself coming down to National League, like, because I was, like, not even big-headed, but just in that, I'm a league player. I'm a league yeah. player. I want to come to National League. And and um, when I came to National League, and I fell in love with football again at Dagenham. And till this day, like, Dagenham always, will always have a place in my heart because they helped, like, reinvigorate my, my career and how I feel about myself and that love that I had for football again. Mm. And just playing week in, week out and enjoying my football and not caring about, not 
yeah, not caring about all, all that stuff outside football. I just said, you know what? I don't care if I'm in National League or League Two or League One. I'm playing football and I'm enjoying it. And yeah, so then at the end of the season, um, what was it? No, in January, um, my agent was just like, go back to Rotherham, get another loan to, to the league now. You just wanted that short month. I signed for them in October. You just wanted that month or two um, playing football again, get back to the league. And I was just like, no, like, I'm enjoying it here. Like I want, I want to stay at Dagenham. Like, so I signed again. Well, I extended my loan, and then end of the season, I signed permanent because I was just enjoying my football. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't think about going to another team or going back into the league just because how they made me feel about football again and myself. And I just said, yeah, like this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was the start of it, man. Yeah, that's very, very important, man. Um, enjoying your football, being happy, you know. Um, you said a lot of things that that I wanna I wanna kind of unpack. First one I wanna unpack is not being able, not being selected on a match day. So waking up in the morning, you mentioned, and and knowing you're not gonna be in the squad. Um, we've we've all been there, you know, and we heard the stories about injury because you're injured or. You know what I mean? Because you're suspended or whatnot and you're waiting up a match that you know you can't play. But being available, being fit and waking up on a Saturday, what talk to me, like, what did that day look like? What did, what did Saturday mornings or Saturday, the whole day look like? It, it, huh, my Saturdays felt so good. <laughs> so, um, sometimes that the, the manager would make you go to training. So I'll go to the training ground do a whole training session, like running. Obviously, there's like three or four of you, so it's not a proper session. So we're running, um, which is always hard. You've got a gym session and then you go and watch the game if it's at home. So you watch the game. And then even sometimes as well, he makes you watch the full game and then do a running session after with the subs who haven't even played. So imagine you you train, you watch the game, you get cold, you're, you're in the stand, and then you've got to go in the change room, get changed, and then like run again. It was just like... It was so depressing. Like, Saturdays didn't feel like Saturdays. Like, it didn't feel like, oh, you're waking up for a match day, just like it's another training day, or when they're away and you get the weekend off. Just like, like, what am I doing? Like, what, what am I doing with myself? Like, it was, yeah, it was a dark place. And being away from home as well contributed to it. Where I was I was living in Rotherham, my first, I was like, what, 20? My first time away from home, like, isolated from my family, from my friends, like people that would lift you up in, in times like this when you're down. Like, I was just by myself and I didn't want to speak to anyone. I used to get messages on a Saturday, uh, are you injured? You know, when you get that message, are you, and I was like, like, no, I'm I'm not injured. So so why are you not playing? Like, I just, you're asking me, you need to ask the manager. It's not, it's not my fault. It's not, it's not me that's telling the manager not to play me. Like, so it's just, yeah. Replying to those messages as well, it's just everything together. I just like, oh, Saturdays weren't Saturdays. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, but I wanted to go back to the part where you said about depression mm. and what you learned from that stage of your life. And what would you say to any player that's feeling that same feeling or any person, really, not just footballers, anyone that's actually feeling that feeling? Like, how did you manage to? Obviously, you left. And that helps you get away from it and um, change your thoughts and feelings. But yeah. what would you say to anyone feeling those feelings? I would say so, like one of the key things that when when you do when you are depressed and you feel depressed is that you isolate yourself. I got like you, you or you feel isolated. So you might be in amongst a lot of people, but you feel like you feel like you're by yourself and you create a false reality. So that's what that's what I'll probably call it because when, yeah, you break a false reality and you tell yourself all these things, you feed yourself with all these lies and that's not true about yourself. It's like, I'm not good enough. Oh, um, I will never make it. Or I'm a failure. Like you create this false reality for yourself and you honestly believe all, every single word that you're saying to yourself, you honestly believe it because that's how you feel. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm this and that. So I feel like my greatest advice is you need to get around people and family who can help you break out of that reality who can tell you that you're good enough. So like sometimes being reassured by someone else, like, oh, like you're, you're more than good enough. You're more than capable. I've seen you do it. So, like you almost forget. In my career, before then, I had played in League Two at Cheltenham, done so well, played so many games. But then I was just like, am I even good enough to play football? 
Mm. Like, my girlfriend was around me telling me, like, look, you've played for Cheltenham. Like, you've played, like, you forget all of these things that you've done so well, but you just feed yourself with negativity and feed yourself with all the things that you haven't done so well. Mm. So it's just like, I would probably advise just getting yourself around people who's going to remind you of that you are good enough. Like, yeah. you, are, you are more than capable of doing it. And also my faith and religion during that time, like, helped me massively. Obviously, everyone's not religious, so that advice might not um, dwell with certain people, but just being in the word and, and um, like, reading the word that is constant, where the Bible was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Like, mm -hmm. the Bible doesn't change. So um, get, gaining my happiness and my self-worth from the Bible that God loves me, regardless of my situation, helped me break out of that as well. So it was a combination of things that, like, my my work is not on the manager telling me you're you're the best player on my team or you're not because he changes his opinion changes. You have a good game, you're the start of the team. You have a bad game, no one wants to hear about you. So it's just um, gaining my self worth from the word um, in the Bible and yeah, having people around you to to constantly remind you that you are good enough. Like you are you are more than capable when you've proven it. So. Yeah, sure. that's what I'm massive with you on, on the on the faith thing as well. Um, whenever I'm going through something, um, well, not even whenever, because I I I stay in it, I stay in it. But there there's been periods where um, I've 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 gone through certain things, and the word is the word has lifted me up. I'll be honest with you, the Bible, you know, what I mean, God God's words, you know, prayer. That, that 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 lifts me up all the time and, and I stay in it, I lock in on that. Do you know what I mean? My faith is massive. Um but yeah, do you know why this is do you know why your stories is so important? Yeah, because I like and um, we're gonna get to it, but I like how you explained how you said, you know what, I don't really care about the level. I just wanna keep playing for Dagon and Redbridge because it's making me feel happy. Mm -hmm. And and I'm enjoying my football. I'm enjoying my football. I'm enjoying playing. Now, with you doing that, making it permanent, keep on playing, 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 playing. Yeah. You managed to get another move, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, so this was when um, COVID happened, just before COVID um, tailed off. I got called up. I actually got called up to the England C as well. Then and then um, a few teams were interested, and then the, like the season tailed off, so I didn't end up going to England see or whatnot. But then that that whole transfer window, um, a couple of teams were interested, like Leighton Orient and um, I think Barrow were interested, and then Scunthorpe were also interested as well. But I honestly said to my agent, I got another year at Dagenham. I had an option year. They took up my option, and I said, look, I'm enjoying my football here. I actually don't mind. I want to stay here. So then they were negotiating with Scunthorpe and the money weren't that great. And I said, look, I'm not, I'm actually not fast. Like I'm not on significantly higher than Dagenham. I'm happy to stay at Dagenham. Like I honestly want to stay and carry on playing. Mm -hmm. And then they then they came back and increased the offer and added other incentives, which made it more enticing. And then obviously you're back in the football league. So then it just got to a point where I was just like, okay, cool. It's making sense now. And um, I, oh, I'm also interested in property, which is on the other side. So I can go up north and then build that up as well. So I said, yeah, cool. Everything does add up and make sense. So I ended up agreeing the deal to go to Stumford and in that COVID season and leaving Dagenham. But I would have honestly been happy to stay there. So now, obviously, you've done that. And do you know why, do you know why that story is important? Because... It's just for the youths to understand and, and young players to understand that when you're enjoying your football, don't worry about anything else in it. It's gonna it's gonna get you somewhere. And that's why I wanted you to tell that tale. Do you know what I mean? That's the only reason why. Now, obviously, you've returned to Dagenham and Redbridge now, and then you're playing, playing, playing. And there was a bit of a um, what do you call it? Exile. Is it exile? What's the word? Last season at Dagenham. What, as in, like, they wanted to get offload a few players? Yeah, so the Dagenham Redbridge, the Dagenham Redbridge that we all knew and the one that we had our amazing wars with, yeah? <laughs> you know, the likes of yourself, um, yeah. Paul McCallum, mm. Angelo Belanta. Mm. Uh, hey, Robertson was there as well them times. Yeah. So, yeah, Robbo. Um, he also was there, he also was there, he also was there. 
Uh, Callum Reynolds was there for a bit. Oh, but he was he was he he, he wasn't there long enough. But, but there was were, there were some battles, you know. Yeah. There were some real battles. Very long enough, and it was and it was yeah. even like it was almost like all right, forget the league. This one's for <laughs> <laughs> this one's for the streets. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know yeah. what I mean? That one was pride. That was all pride. It was all pride, like, do you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a game where it was like, yeah, let's just go in it. And it was it was a great number of years that we had. I'm sure we come out on top more, more times than not. Though. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely came out on top more than them. We definitely did. There was a couple of times. A lot of draws. A lot of draws. <laughs> Josh Walker was there. Do you know what I'm saying? Josh Walker. That's right. That's right. There, 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 was, there was a couple of times where they got mad equalizers. Like, <laughs> Last minute, and it was just a. It felt like a loss, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but those those games were good. But now, obviously, in the summer, a lot of that crop of 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 those players they ended up leaving. Been to bring Exodus. Ah, huh? an Exodus is. I think that's the word when everyone leaves. I don't think it's an Exodus, you know. I'll get the word though. We're, we're actually, gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I don't actually know. So I don't right now. But we actually sound mad unintelligent right now, but <laughs> we'll get the words, we'll get the words. But yeah, um, yeah, so obviously that crop of players yourself, uh, Matt Robinson and Co. and whatnot, yeah, you ended up you ended up all leaving, you know. And that was a bit of a shock. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a bit of a shock. And obviously now yourself at Hartlepool, McCallum at Eastley, Angelo Belanta with us, Matt Robinson woke in, but he's on loan to us, you know. Um, Josh Walker ended up going into the league, but now being what 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 happened last season that everyone had to like everyone just ended up leaving. Um, so how it started the start of the season, like on paper we had a playoff team minimum, like as you name all the players, like we had a really good team, but I don't know what it was, <sighs> like certain things just didn't click, so we didn't win as much games as we should do because we had so like high expectations for ourselves on our team when we didn't win certain games that we should have it looked worse compared to just going into it thinking okay are we going to win are we going to lose so uh, expectations were so high and we just didn't hit that mark so we came to what like Jan and then obviously the bigger teams came in for certain players like Josh Walker and whatnot so they left in Jan and I don't feel like uh, or think the club replaced those players so then it's like we're then trying to get into the playoffs and we've lost a few of our main hitters. So it made it even harder to get into the playoffs and then come to the end of the season, the club just decided to go in a different direction. So they cut the budget and like, so I had another year at Dagenham. I think Angelo had another year at Dagenham. A few players had another year at Dagenham, but it's just like, because they've now changed direction and they've said, look, we've put in a lot of money, which clubs do, like they, we put in a, um, a lot of money into the team to build this team, which on paper is very good, and you've not hit playoffs. So it's just like, can we keep on putting money every single year and paying these players and not hitting playoffs? So I think they probably just got to a point where they thought, look, for the last three years, we've put in a certain amount of money, we've not hit playoffs. So now let's have a rebuilding year. Let's go a different direction. So they cut the budget. And then um, they've obviously, Darren McMahon left, and they've got a new manager in with... Uh, lesser budget so he then has to accordingly and sign players within that budget so even like I remember having a meeting with him and he said look like when I first came in and like I, I was given a job I was told the budget and whatnot and obviously you and certain players are outside that budget but since I've been in you've been good for me and I like you as a player as a person and I want you around but the budget doesn't necessarily make sense because this is what the club's obviously doing. It's, it's, it's a decision that's more higher up than me. And he said, look, you have the decision to stay and I'm going to treat you the same as I'll treat any other player, but come to the end of your contract, we're not going to be able to give you a new contract anyway. So um, he just said, look, the decision's up to you. And it just, yeah. So I think a few players, they had to get through, rid of a few players because of the budget, really. And then um, it wasn't like, they weren't good enough to play for Dagenham anymore. Obviously, like Paul McCallum, you can see what he's doing in the league now. All the players that's left, Angelo Belanta, you played with him, so you know what these he, qualities like. So, um, yeah. So, we just got to a stage where I just said, look, I, I do want to be at Dagenham, but if higher up, they don't 
the budget doesn't make sense, then like let me go somewhere else where it's more I'm more not more appreciated, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's always tough. It's always tough when you're put in that predicament. So many teams have happened to change a budget midway through a season. And especially when you've got a big budget, that brings added pressure. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was what happened with Woken this season. Obviously, they made playoffs last year. They they threw money at it. They brought in a lot of players, back the manager. When they don't see a return for their money, it's not long before they start making those changes. But when some things don't go right, there's always a silver lining in it. And it seems like you found that with your move to Hartlepool. So how, was you, how have you found, obviously, um, yesterday you didn't play. How have you found this period compared to when you wasn't playing before um, now that you're out of the team? Yeah, I think um, I've, I've, I look at things more positive, positively now. So um, like my whole mindset now is there's always, as you said, there's a silver lining. There's always a positive in every situation. And that's how I try and live my life. So whatever it is, whatever circumstance that you're in, there's literally always a positive. So now that I'm not playing, rather than like going the other way and thinking, oh, I'm not playing, like, am I good enough for the manager and so on? So I've seen it as a period of like, the manager's playing these players for a certain reason. We both want the same, we both want the same, um, we both have the same goal, want the same result. We both want to win games, we keep clean sheets. He sees these players ahead of me as the sure option to get to that aim. So he feels that playing these players, we're going to get clean sheets and we're going to win games. So what can I learn from these players? So what does he, what is he bringing to the team that he's not necessarily looking at me, looking at me and thinking, okay, Manny's going to give me this. Is it experience? Is it um like the effect he has on other players? Like what is it? So I'm just using this period to analyze the team. Sometimes when you're playing as well, you can't always take in what your team needs. Like what what am I actually bringing to my team? So I've like I've, I've watched the team and think, look, what can I when I do come back in? What can I bring to the team that I wasn't bringing before? Like what do we need? Like when do I? And yeah, like what else was I gonna say? And like me physically there's things that I need to work on where like my ankles are weak. I've been strapping my ankles for the past few years and just playing every game, playing every game with a strapped ankle. So now that I'm out of the team, let me use this time to strengthen my ankle. Like, so I'm, I'm doing more gym sessions, I'm getting stronger in the gym, I'm strengthening my ankle. So then when I am ready to come back in, when someone gets injured or whatnot, I'm ready and I'm going to be better than I was before. So I've, I've gone the other way and used it as positive to, to work on things that I need to work on. Um, yeah. That's mentality, man. That's the mentality I have. And I'm sure that it's gonna work out for you. Do you know what? And do you know what's interesting is because you're experienced in it, you're experienced at this level, you've played so many games. So it will be easy for you to sit on your high horse and think, anyway, when I get my chance. Not even being negative, but when I get my chance, I'll be back in. But instead, you're actually going full 360 and you're actually saying, do you know what? What can I learn from these people that are in the team? You know, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's wicked. I think that's proper good. You know what I mean, and you never stop learning in your career. You're always learning, which, and and I'm glad that like, you're 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 wired that way where you understand that. You know, it's good. Yeah. It's rare for sure. It's re it's rare for sure to have uh, a player think so deeply and outwardly about. What, how he can improve himself or what he can do for the team while he's not in the team. So for anyone watching, um, that's great advice. That's great advice. Um, but going on to some of the games, it was a different kind of fixture list because there was a lot of teams in FA uh, Trophy action. Um, but again, a crazy, crazy uh, fixture list. Um, obviously, you're an experienced player now, Manny, so you're going to know a lot of these teams. You're going to play against a lot of these players. So it'll be interesting to get your take. Uh, but we're going to start off with Altrincham versus Rochdale. Now, Altrincham in fourth and Rochdale in tenth. And going into the season, you might have thought that those roles would be reversed. But Altrincham have, have had a great season so far. Their front three are absolutely flying. And they all the goal scorers yesterday when they ran out 3-0 winners. Um, Justin Amaluzo, uh, Linny and Con Clark will be 16th of the season, by the way. Not a striker. He plays number 10, hits 16. Um, what are we saying about them, Manny? Have you, have, what have you seen from them? Have you been impressed? Do you think it's just 
they're just having a one of those seasons or what do you think? I've been I've been really impressed with with both of them, like the style of play. Like I'm really uh, I'm big on like tactics and style of plays, and I find it interesting like how like teams battle it out and how does a manager react to when this team sets up this way and all of that. So like Rochdale, I was more impressed with Rochdale than I was with Orchardham. Okay. Like when I played them anyway, obviously it's, it's it's what happens on the day, but just like their movements and this um the, the positions that certain players picked up and how other players reacted um off them, I thought was really good. Um, Orchardham, they were good. I'm a loser came on against us and done well. Um, I think yeah, it's gonna be a tight game because they're both like ball playing teams that like, they both play out the back. Um, both have a good system how they like to play. No, it's gonna be an interesting game. Yeah, that, well, this to be fair, Ultram 3 0, fam, it's a kind of result that it looks like a one sided affair. Mm -hmm. Although that Manny thinks that they're uh, he's impressed with Rochdale, it seems that Ultram absolutely chanced them. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because we would not have thought it's going to be a 3 0 game. I mean, come on, you know, and we had Tyree Sinclair on a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and he was up for this game. You know, maybe it should have come, maybe it should have come that Tuesday because it got postponed. <laughs> you can't say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he had the fire in his stomach. Mm. Like speaking to us, like, yeah, we've got Ultra Lemon T Day, maybe it should have come then. But it got postponed, obviously, with the weather recently. Um, but yeah, three nil, three nil. Look, we never know how how game how we we're not at the game, so we're not privy to seeing how the game went. If Rochdale, if it was a three nil game, if Rochdale should have been in it or whatnot. But the front three for Ocean and they're just they're just killers, isn't it? You know, they're killers. You know, you got an loser that's just gonna run players into the ground. You know. Le le Lenny leading the line and Conklock just doing producing his magic. Like, do you know what I mean? For me, he's been the player of the season. He if the season was to end tomorrow, I'll give him player of the year. He's been the best player of the season. Hey, hey that's a big shot, you know. Sure, Who, sure. Who's that? Who's that? Sorry, I missed that. He said Chris, Chris Conklock is the player of the season so far. Fem, there's only 15 left, but listen, I don't think many people are gonna argue with you. I yeah. don't think I think there'll be a lot of Chesterfield fans, but That's what, what, neutral standpoint for them. Well, one thing about me, Manny, is that I stand on business. You know what I'm saying? I don't... Uh, <laughs> I like that. You know, I said what I said, in it? <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. I like it. I like what it. I said. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I stand by it, in it? Like, he's definitely been the best player this year. So, Yeah. You're not, you're not, you're not usually wrong, fam. I mean, the one to look out for for the season, you maybe got a little bit wrong. But... <laughs> we won't even get into that. We won't even get into that. Did you, did you say? Hey, yeah. listen, listen. If you no, see, no, no, bro. If some of our uh, previous followers have watched some of the other episodes, go back to the first one and see who Femi thought was going to be the player of the season. Listen, hey, recruitment and player development and uh, having an eye for a player, it's not easy, fam. It's not easy. <laughs> I thought that was so wrong. <laughs> well, to be fair, I said, I said, um, your player, your teammate, uh, Manny, Josh was going to be the one to watch for the season. It seems as though injuries have uh, curled him, curled him a little bit. And you've had quite a lot of injuries in your squad, in around your squad as well. Um, but looking at your game yesterday, I know it's a long, long, long slog of a trip for you guys. Um, did you do overnight stay? I'm guessing you did. Overnight stay, eight hours on the coach. I'm guessing everything's overnight stay for you guys, right? Every London team, yeah. Overnight, yeah. yeah. So you guys played Woking yesterday, live on TNT Sport. Um, great things that they're doing. I love when they cover the National League. Um, so long may that continue. But Joe Gray popped up with a goal and it probably looked as though he was going to walk out of a perfect away day performance. Mm. But 90 plus 7, was it? 90 plus... What, the goal? Or five minutes yeah, added on. The equaliser, like, equaliser. Like, one like ninety-two minutes in. Like, yeah, that's that's a that's a killer. Lewis Walker popping up with the goal for Woking might be a big big goal for them. That decides whether they stay up in the long run. But talk me through that game. Mm. How did it go? What did you see? Obviously, it's it's a it's a long old trip back when you've just lost. It feels like a loss, isn't it? Yeah, 
feels like a loss. Um, the game was was a tough one for the boys. You know, I feel like Broken played better than we thought they would do. Mm-hmm. So like they came out, they were pressure on me. knew they were going to press high. Um, they pressed high, but then there were spells in the game where we controlled possession. So we got the early goal, controlled possession, try and we broke the press. But then for majority of the game, they actually played very well. So they applied pressure. We defended well, like an away performance. Um, didn't give much chances away, but they were just knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. We just felt like it just needed something, something like over the edge for them to score. But like we were on the back foot for the majority of the game. But we did defend well. So it's just like, it's a bit of both. Like, did we deserve to win? Probably not. But then we did deserve to win because we defended so well. But then on the other hand, they played so well. So they kind of did deserve their, their goal at the same time. So, um, yeah, it was it was a tough game for the boys. Like, But being on the coach for eight hours, obviously not making excuses for them, but being on the coach for eight hours, um, like just a long trip and everything, probably didn't help um, Like how the, how, how the boys felt out there. And then the 5.30 kickoff waiting around the whole day probably didn't help, but... You know, you know what I'm saying, but it's just, it's just little things that I just got to get on with and, and and play the game, which they did. So it's just unfortunate for for them to concede so late as well. No, for sure. It's a... I want to talk, talk about um um Hartlepool just for a little bit, Manny. Yeah. Um. Now you look at your squad. Mm. There's yourself. There's there's a wary. There's Josh Amara. There's Featherstone. There's Luke Waterfall. You know, your squad is... You've got a heavy squad. I'll be honest with you. It's a heavy, heavy team. Um, would you say that you guys are underachieving this season? Because you started off the season flying. you got Mancini. How can I forget Mancini? That's the <laughs> man. Like, do you know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's, that's bad from, on my part. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like, would you say you guys are under underachieving? Because... um. You started off the season and you've gone off, taken off, doing what you're, 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 you're meant to be doing, what everyone expected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, then, for some reason, you just had a mad dip in form, you know? And a mad dip in form. And you can say the same about us, you know what I mean? I don't think either of us should be where we are, we are in the league or is always expected to be there, you know? So I just want to I just want to get your take on whether you guys are, do you believe you're underachieving or do you feel you should be higher or is this where you expected to be when you when um at the beginning of the season you know? No, definitely. I think we are definitely underachieving. Like we've got a like in my opinion a playoff team minimum. Like we we I feel like our team is so good on our day we beat anyone in the league. We beat Chesterfield. Even our game against Chesterfield when we played them at the start of the season we we're beating them two 0 and then. A key player got injured and we just didn't like react to it well and we ended up losing the game three two in the last minute but it's just that like, we've we've got such a good team we've named out players but there's even players that you haven't named where they're actually so vital and so good in our team that we are we go toe to toe with any team in this league um but it's just like we started so well as you said but then we had that period in the middle where we had key players injured all at the same time and that's what killed us so we had um, our first injury was uh, Dodzi, um, ACL out for 12 months. And then the game after that, we had Mancini injured out for three months. So these are two key players in our team. One's a right side of centre half, one's a centre mid, a very influential player. And then like the week after, we had Cookie, Callum Cook, who's our number 10, who's very good as well, um, injured. So it's just like three. And then the week after that, we had. Another percent of mid injured. So it's like four or five players in our starting lineup all got injured in like the same kind of period of time. And obviously we brought in new players on loan, like young players from Sunderland, Middlesbrough. But our team was still trying to play the same how we played at the start of the season with these players, um, with the younger players. And it just didn't like we're asking, we were asking the same things from a different player, which it didn't work. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So it didn't click as it did come the start of the season. So um, we had to change our style of play and we started going longer. Like we started playing more long ball football and we our players are not suited to long ball football. So only like Manny Desirube and Josh up top who 
win the headers, flick on. But then our midfielder, our ball player midfield, you've got Featherstone in there, you've got Cookie in there, you've got um, Tom Crawford, that all ball player midfield, it just didn't, like winning second balls and flicking it on didn't suit us as well. So then we started, we went for a period where we were losing a lot of games because like our personnel and our style of play just didn't, it was just clashing a bit. And then um, that's when the, the manager obviously ended up get, leaving in Christmas times. And then, like, the new manager come in and we started getting these, these players back from injury. So Mancini came back from injury, um, Callum Cook's back from injury. And then, yeah, so then we started picking up again. So it just goes to show, like, when we have our team, we are we go toe-to-toe with any team in the league. And just the injuries have just killed us in the middle. And 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 you guys are now 11th place, 41 points. Now, Gay said our 7th with 47 points. So as crazy as the season has been for you guys, and I can connect with you on losing a lot of players on injury. It seems like we've had very similar seasons because we've we've lost loads of players through injuries as well. But obviously, look, you've got um, 13 games to go and you're six points outside of the playoffs. Is that still a target for you guys? Uh, Yeah, I think it has to be. It has to be. It has to be a target for us. Just because of the squad that we have, it will be... It will, yeah, you can't not want to get there because you know you're more than good enough to be in there. And, like, how this middle patch has been, it's been so consistent. Like, every team has been inconsistent. That's why we still have a chance to get in the playoffs. Like, if you see from, I would say, what is it, fifth downwards or fourth downwards to, to like, 16th, everyone's been so inconsistent. Like, you win certain games... Then you're expected to win, you lose them, and then that's why we still have a chance to get in there. So it's just you have to aim to get in there because every team is inconsistent. You just have to try and get a run to hopefully be that one or two teams who sneaks into there and yeah, gets in the playoffs. So that that has to be the aim. Be for you, for you as well, that has to be the aim because you know teams are inconsistent and you can possibly get in there. Yeah. No, the aim for us, we're just trying to stay in the league, bro. We're not trying to yeah, we're not trying to do nothing crazy. We're just trying to stay in the league. Yeah, you do. <laughs> stay in the league. Don't worry about a little old boy on wood, please. Don't look at us. <laughs> look elsewhere, please. Don't worry. Feb, you know what I'm saying, Feb? <laughs> Don't look worried about us. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but you know what? No, nah, jokes aside, obviously, everyone's trying to everyone's trying to hit that, the promised land, man. No one's trying to stay in this league for longer than they have to, but I really do like Crawford in your in your midfield to me, but I always like the way he plays. Um, real silky smooth player. Um, for, and I don't mean this is disrespectful, but he doesn't look like a footballer, if that makes sense. Like <laughs> he looks like, like he plays like the guitar or something, but the way he plays is so swift and smooth. Yeah, I really like him. And as to be fair, everyone that I know that plays with him always has great things to say. So I'm looking forward to watching him as well. Um, but one of me and Femi's old teams, York City, we South Bend away from home. Linnell John Lewis popping up with a late, late goal. And those three points are valuable and vital for them. Fem, South End having a bit of a tricky, a tricky spell. I know I said it last week, Manny. Last week I said maybe they need to tell everyone they've got money problems again because that's when they were really going. <laughs> but now that they've, now that everyone's comfortable, everyone's eating, everyone knows when their bills are getting paid. Everyone's been chilling like this. Chilling. chilling. <laughs> They're relaxing. But all jokes aside, Fem, Talk to me, man. South End losing again. Hey, they need to be careful because now they've been leapfrogged by York City and they're in the relegation zone. That's just the reality. They are all Dorkin are 21st with 34 points and they're level, they're only out of it by goal difference. You know, South End are currently 19th. And, the, and what's keeping them out of the relegation zone is the goal difference. But they did so well. They eradicated a ten point deduction with ease. By the way, oh, they made the they made the ten point deduction look so so swift, so calm, like as if to say they even even people might have even forgot that they got ten Bro, points. Listen, you would forget. No one would ever think South Bend have had a ten point um, deduction. But yeah, but I'm not even gonna lie to you. And I know they got the ten point deduction. Yeah, but you can't even blame on the ten point deduction because you got out of that. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> you fall out of it so fast, yeah. You you know all tenth and ninth and that after your point deduction. 
<laughs> so you can't even like now you're here, you can't say it was a 10 point deduction. Like, you can't say that. But maybe I don't know, they they they, they want pressure in it. Like bills ain't getting paid, that they, they, they start performing, you know what I mean? Take over, like they start performing, then they everyone gets new contracts, they stop performing. Now relegations on maybe it might be the the trigger for them to start. And I say that respectfully, like, I love Southend as a club, you know, I've got loads of friends there, I know the coaching staff really well there, you know, but, um, yeah, maybe the players might just need a rocket, a rocket, like, or something to to, to fuel them, you know, and, and maybe this might be it, oh, we're in the relegation, they're not cool, let's go now, like, maybe, but, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Do you know what, we might be thinking too deep into it, right, but the mind is such a powerful tool, because... When your back's against the wall, you don't have any preseason games, you don't know when you're getting paid, you don't have any contracts, people getting signed on uh, non contract. Okay, everybody has to fight now. And it, seem, it just seems from the outside, okay, now everything's a bit cushy. Everyone's just kind of not down in tools, but everyone's relaxing. So, yeah. You know, it's a great point, though. They didn't have no preseason games. Do you reckon that was the end of ripple effect of not having preseason games? No. Mandy, what do you think? Mm, I think that's probably. I think they probably got past that now because we're over Christmas. And I don't think that's probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they probably got past that. Yeah. I think, are we interested to know like what the um, the team is like in terms of if they've had injuries or like whatnot to to see? That's why they're having a little like spell. Because I think that Harry Cardwell, he got injured for a few games, didn't it? No. And he was their main. Yeah, and there was, there was a period where, to be fair, everyone goes through injuries, but there was a period where they only had 13 players available for selection. I know Maro Valletti has been, um, isn't there anymore either. So they're letting players go, but they're also signing a lot of players. So we all love the story. We all love that that the underdog story, but now they're not really underdogs anymore, you know? So uh, they've, got the, they've, got the, they've got the squad. They've got the squad, the full squad. I'm looking at their lineup now, even to the point where Wes is actually Wes is actually on the bench. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when you're yeah. in it, when you're in it, you're in it. Um, and that's similar to Eastley. Now they've lost again against a resurgent file team. Um, I think one thing we have to point out is Paul McCallum has been suspended. I think he got a straight red, so that's three games. Now they've lost two without their talisman. Now Two one filed one out winners, and that's uh, five wins in six for them and a draw. So they're absolutely flying. Josh Clay and Nick Horton scoring, re scoring the goal for Eastley. Um, and it seems as though filed have finally clicked. It looked at for a long time, they was rock bottom for a long, long time. And it looked as though they were going to be going up to come straight back down. But looking at Paul McCallum, such an interesting career, such an interesting character that we've had on the show, um, having one of the most amazing seasons. Will Griggs. Slowly but surely catching up to him. He's on 19 to Paul's 23. But it was a big turning point um, for Paul McCallum. And I want to ask you this question. Obviously, he left Chesterfield. A lot of people wondering if he's going to be able to do it. Has he lost his touch? He's proved everyone wrong. Your biggest turning point in your career, Manny. And then, Femi, I'm going to send that question over to you. And when I say biggest turning point, a, a, a point where it could have gone either way. So maybe a point where it could have got worse where you wish you had done something differently or a time when it worked out for the best for you? Uh, I would say, so when I was at Brentford, um, I went on loan to Cheltenham and I done really well at Cheltenham in League Two. And we survived relegation, like I was like, what, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. And my next step, I thought in my head was go out on loan again because Brentford said, look, give me a new contract, but you're not, you're not ready to play champ at Brentford. Go out on loan again. But I thought my next step was to go out and loan to a League One team because I thought, yeah, I thought League Two. You know, like when you're young, you've just got that that mindset in your head that you're arrogant, like, yeah, I'm good enough now. So I said, yeah, I'm ready to go to League One. I've done League Two. Get me a loan to League One. And they said, no, go back to Cheltenham again for League Two. And I was like, nah, I've done League Two. So then against their advice, I forced, basically forced a loan to, to Rotherham. So I went, on Rotherham to, I went to Rotherham to go on loan. They were in League One at the time. And the manager at Rotherham said, no, 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 we really like you. Don't sign on loan. We want you on a permanent. You'll be a first team player. And ding, 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 ding. Brentford, I'm a B team player. Like Rotherham, I'm a first team player. It's just an easy choice, isn't it? 
So then I think signing for Rotherham at that point was a big turning point in my career because I was at the starting stages where I just needed games. Like the level weren't the most important thing then. Yeah. Like I was still learning my trade. I needed games and experience. So rather than trying to jump League 2 and be like, oh yeah, like I've done League 2 now. I should have gone back on loan to Cheltenham and done another season, a full season at Cheltenham and League 2 would have done me a world of good compared to skipping skipping out full learning in League 2, going to League 1 and Robert, man, I didn't play. So went to Rotherham, signed there on a permanent, instead of a loan, scrapped my contract at, at, at Brentford and then just sat on the bench. We had They had Shemi Ajayi playing centre-half, which is really good. And I was fighting, trying to get over him, who's played how many games already in the league. And I just sat on the bench. And like for like a season, yeah, for 18, nearly 18 months, and I didn't play any games. So I feel like that was a big turning point where I learned a lot that the level is important, but isn't always the most important thing. Like getting games and playing games at a decent level is more important than being at a high level and just sitting on the bench or not even getting into the squad. So I feel like that was a real turning point in my career where I, I learned a lot and mm. yeah. No, thanks. Yeah, that's 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 big. That's big. But me, what about you? What was your biggest turning point in your career? There's been a few. There's been a few. And the biggest, man. The biggest. I said I me- I mentioned the one at York, innit? When I was transfer listed, didn't it? You mentioned that one, yeah. Fine. Um, on that, yeah. There was a season that there was a season that um at Daggers that when I first came into the game, obviously you played it. <clears throat> I went on loan, come back, played League One, um, got relegated to League Two, played another season, and then I just remember like the noise wasn't as surrounding my name wasn't as crazy as it had been in my first season. And it didn't go, it wasn't a great season, just put it that way. It wasn't a great season for me. And I remember at the end of that, my second season, um, I've gone into the office and John Stills said he's transfer listed me. I've been transfer listed a few times, you know. Now, only, only Stilly will know whether this is a test, it was a test or not. But he basically said, look, you're transfer listed. Um, someone comes in for you, you can go. But I had another two years on my deal. I've never been transfer listed before, but I something in me, you know how I am already, is like, yeah, cool, I'm transfer listed. That means I need to go crazy. And I remember that summer, I put myself through it, man. I'll never forget it. That, that summer, I became that man. Bro, that might have been the start of <laughs> everything you're seeing now. I can't lie to you. Like, I put, I, I done a madness. Like, the runs I was putting myself through, you know, I've got loads of witnesses because they used to come with me. Um, but yeah, like, it was just, it was just gruesome. Like, I put myself through, and I remember coming back and just smashing preseason, smashing it. But what's funny is that um, I think, I think still he was. Even though I was smashing all the runs, the 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 possession, all of that, still he must have said something like, yeah, but in comparison to last year's times, it's still not good enough. Something like that. So I might have come first in this run, you know what I mean? But he's comparing it to last year's. And I'm just like, oh, bro, you're making this really difficult for me. But like I said, like, it 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 pushed me. It pushed me. And Oh, long story short, I ended up going into that season and playing 50 games. 50 games, you know what I mean? That year. Um, and that was probably one of my best seasons. And uh, you look you look back at your career and you look at what season stands out for you. It's definitely top three of my best seasons, you know, that year being ever present, playing 50 games, you know, at the level one. And it propelled me to that season propelled me to 100 games at 21 years old. Once you reach those numbers there, it's like you're kind of in the game, in it. You're kind of, you know what I mean. So I would say that was that was a turning point, and maybe realize just like yeah, you get out what you put in. Like I know what I put in that summer. I really know what I put in that summer. And fifty games is fifty games in one year. Everyone, we we all play football. It's not easy, but that was the reward that was I got put in. 
No, for sure, for sure. So it sounds like adversity and hindsight from the both of you, um, those are big things, man. Those are really big things. And in football, you're going to face both of them, you know, but it's how you react to it. And it seems like you both reacted in the right way. So long may it continue, man. Um, by looking at some of the teams that were in... My yeah, biggest, I say yours. Uh, biggest turning point of my career. Um, the year I left York and I went to Grimsby, I was... I went to York. I left. I got a pay up from York in the January. So I had about four to five months and I need this club just to see me through and try to get my career back on, on track. So I went to um, Grimsby. Now Grimsby and Gateshead were the two teams that were after me at the time and Grimsby were always in the playoffs and Gateshead were like managed by my old manager Gary Mills and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go to the team in the playoffs. It just makes a little bit more sense. You know, I don't want to be a team that are down in the bottom. But anyway, it turns out somehow there was about, I think with like five games left, they were like eight points off it. And then somehow, miraculously, they made the playoffs. They played, uh, we played them in the semi-final to get to Wembley. They won um, and beat, uh, beat Grimsby to get to the playoff final. They eventually lost. But that wasn't actually a turning point. That was just one part of it. I actually got released at the end of the season by Grimsby. And I literally had like no clubs. Like no clubs whatsoever. And this is me playing from guy and playing 200 games for York or 100 games for York, winning promotion, winning the FA Trophy, to now having no, no options. And the only option was Welling United. Welling United. And it, and it, it really made me realise that you've really got to navigate and think about where you go within the space of the season. Um, but yeah, it was a sink or swim moment for me because I had to go and find a job because the wages, I think the wages were like no more than 300 pounds, something like a week. So found a job, working in the gym, selling memberships. And it was like, okay, I can. this could even be my life or I can make something of it. Got my head down, used the gym to my advantage I used to say to the PTs, I'll give you the new members if you give me sessions. That was like the, the trade-off. So every day after work, I'd do a session. Before work, I'd do a session, go train in the morning. And then I managed to I managed to earn a move to Wrexham that season, after that season. So that was a really big turning point. That was, a, that was a one way where it really could have gone up or down. And thankfully, I managed to find my way to a, a good club. But yeah, that, that year at Welling... Wow. That's where I met Tyrone Marsh and first played Chris Bush, actually. But yeah, crazy, crazy year, man. That was the biggest turning point in my career because, yeah, it could have been, it could have been long. Um, yeah, we all have those turning points, and we all have moments in our career that, that um, wake us up, you know? Um, you see cold water in the morning. <laughs> the face in the morning time, that is where it felt like, but I needed to be woken up, man. I was in the, I was in the days, man. I was in the days. Um, but Fem, is that uh, a tie you got on the, for the culture today, yeah? Yeah, obviously the AFCON finals today. Oh, yeah, the AFCON finals today. I know it's not National League, but there's few players that made a play in National League in, in, those, in those squads. So, Fem, talk to me. What's the prediction? Manny, what's your background? Nigeria. Come on. Hey. <laughs> hey, so what's the prediction, fellas? I know, obviously, you're both going to say it's a win, but is it going to be an easy one? Is it going to be a tough one? What we say? It's not going to be easy, bro. It's not, gonna be, it's not gonna be easy, but I think we'll win. I think it's our year. But South, um, but Ivory Coast, they're a really good team. What really you about team. to say there? South what? What was you about to say? Uh, <laughs> but South America, because they played, they played yesterday. They oh. came first yeah. place. But, um, yeah, obviously Ivory Coast. Look, they're, they're they're no mugs, man. They're a really good team. Very very good team. So it's gonna be a good game, but look, I've got to put my 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 cards on Nigeria, man. Come on, <laughs> man! I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I told Femi, man, if we win, if if they win, I said we. You know, I'm rooting for. I'm from East London, so it's basically Nigeria. <laughs> 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 Only one to go, you know. <laughs> hey, listen. I went to Femi's wedding, yeah, and obviously, um, the traditional Fem. If you win tonight. <laughs> Hey, we both might have to come in the traditional wear tomorrow for the training. 
<laughs> but yeah, Manny, what are you thinking? Win, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, man. I think can win, but it's not really easy. Just as Fem said, like Ivory Coast is a good team, um, and anything can happen in it on the day. It's final, isn't it? So yeah, but hopefully Nigeria win, man. Yeah, crazy. A lot of my, a lot of my, um, our Gambia friend Maza said we won't be able to. The Nigerians won't stop talking about this if, it, if it's a successful one. So <laughs> London's getting shut down. We know this. Hey, it, it got shut down when Congo went through. So I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah, more of us. It's just I don't know. I don't know. How, how do you feel when you watch the games and that? Do you feel like a lot of pressure? Like, do you, yeah. especially like, because you know um, a few of the players as well, like, yeah, that it means more, innit? Yeah, it means a lot. Do you know what? It's, it's crazy because I watched the semis with my dad. So me and my dad went out to go and watch watch the game. And it was, it was, it was good because I'm feeling the pressure, but like, he's there. And he's like, Feeling the pressure, but it's coming out in a different way. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, like, it's crazy because obviously you already know the Nigerian community, man. So it's like, I know all the players that that play for Nigeria that are from like London and whatnot in there. Mm. But my dad knows the parents, so my dad's just telling me like, "Oh, is that? Oh, like, oh, he looks like his dad." Or like, <laughs> oh, so, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it was dope. It was dope. It was nice. It was nice. It was nice. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel the pressure. It's a big... So again, yeah? yeah, yeah, no, I do. Like, obviously, you want you want the best for the the country and the players as well. Like, even in the last round when Ola missed that pen, like I felt so bad for him. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you feel the pressure for him. Like, when Lukman's playing, or like you just feel Joe Rebo, Shemi. Like, you want all of them to do well, innit? You feel you feel the pressure for them. Like, yeah, it's, it's true. true man. It's been a great tournament. Yeah, it's been good. Hey, the Afcon, I, I feel like the Afcon's finally getting the respect it deserves as well. So I'm hearing a lot of I'm hearing a lot of good things. I'm hearing a lot of good things. So long may it continue. But talking about cup competitions, a lot of National League clubs were in FA Trophy action. Um, Bromley beat Avely 2-0. Obviously, Bromley already won it. Um, Sully Hall and our mate Gus Mafuta beat Chorley 3-1. Kidderminster lost to Peterborough Sports. And one of my old teammates, actually, the player manager, Michael Gash, scoring the winner there. Gay said 1-1-0 one, one, against Hereford. Marcus Dinanga popping up with a goal there. And Barnet, probably a much-needed win for them against a Welling. 3-0 they ran out winners. So hopefully they can bring that form into the league. But Manny, one of your old teams yesterday, Dagenham and Redbridge, 7-1 seven. Seven, against Shit. Oxford City. Now, we had... Um, Josh Parker on last week, Oxford City striker. And he had some good things to say about his team, but that result there, man. Josh Reese, RX team, up to 10 now. He's got a hat trick. He took on the match ball. In the FA, he's back. I uh, think come on, let's unpack what, what, what he said. Who? Let's, let's unpack huh? what Parker. We're gonna we're gonna unpack it, Fem. We're gonna unpack it, but let me just quickly say, let me just quickly read out the scorers. Uh Hill and Vincent popping out of ones. In the FM is up to 14th. Now, going back to what Femi said, now, Josh Parker was waxing lyrical about the style of play. He felt as though Oxford play a style of football that puts them in the top three of the league. Um, Manny, you're... Your hands on your head, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big statement, you know. Massive statement. It's a massive statement. But... What I always say is, we only see teams twice a year. Yeah. But the results will show that regardless of the style you're playing, mm. you're not getting the results. Yeah. So, I've played against Oxford, and yeah, they, you know what, to be fair to Josh, it is a style of play that's favourable and it looks great on the eye, but maybe we should have said that too, in fact. Top three was, but he was in his flow, so we didn't really want to interrupt, but... Yeah. Then what do you think? Um, he, there's going to be a level of bias first and foremost because he's an Oxford player man I want to get your thoughts on this as well after we're coming to you after mm. I, your reactions are, are making me laugh right now <laughs> 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 oh. but look yeah there's going to be there's, yeah there's going to be a level of bias he's an Oxford City player you know and the Oxford play decent football 
absolutely, you know, they do, they do. Is the top three? Absolutely not. And I don't know. I just don't think that needs to be mentioned when you're rock bottom of the table. That makes sense because it's obviously, yeah, you're, 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 you're basically saying, yeah, we're top three, but it's not equating to nothing. Does that make sense? It's it's not really adding up. Like, so, and don't get twisted. Everybody wants to play the right way. Everybody wants to play the right and do the right things. Me, me, I don't want to play the right way. <laughs> win. Manny, you know I don't care about how we play. I just want to win. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to win at the end of the 5.30 comes. I want to win for me. I don't care. Uh, Jam, Jam, I, I hear you. I hear you. But you know what I mean, though? Like, a lot of teams are... A lot of teams are trying to play the right way and whatnot, you know, but it's got to be result. It's got to lead to results. And the results of them playing that football mm. can't be we're playing great football, but we're losing 7-1. It's not, it's, it's not making sense, you know? It's not making sense. So, yeah, man, like, maybe they need to... Boy, if that football is... Manny, you're killing me. Manny, you're killing That's, me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's I'm coming to you. No, That's it's beating them to lose 4-0 and then 7-1, then it's, it, may be, it may be time to try something new. So I'll say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Manny, what about you? You know the worst thing, yeah? I actually think there's a middle ground. I think there's some truth to what he's saying, you know? Because I think, like, Sometimes you play the right way and you have a good style of play, but the personnel might just not match it. So you're playing the right way, but the players that you have may not be the best players possible to execute how you want to play. So there's a middle ground. So you might play well this season, not get a good result, but then next season, you might play the same way, recruit better players, and then the, your style of play is going to shine out and you get the results. So there's a middle ground. Do you get what I'm saying? But I just feel like top three, I wouldn't say they're top three. But I do like their style of play. They play good football. They make good triangles. They want to play the right way. Um, but I'm so fascinated about tactics and how teams play. So that's why I was obviously like laughing and like making a joke when he said top three. I feel like Gates head up. We've got the best style of play in the league. Um, I don't Chesterfield are top of the league, but I don't feel they've their style of play necessarily the best. They play decent style of play, but I would say Gates head best style of play. Rochdale second best for me. Like their movements of the players and the players that they pick up, but some they take a lot of risk at the back. Um, hence the reason why they concede a lot of goals. I think, but playing that way, you do concede a lot. And then Auction are probably up there as well. So I'll say that's probably my top three. I don't see Oxford in that top three, but I do think their style of play is good. And then, then you've obviously got to mention teams like Barnet, teams like Chesterfield. You know what I mean? That also have a deep. They might not make the top three, but they're definitely up there. Yeah, you know. um, Oldham, 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 <laughs> but I hear what Femi's saying in terms of um, you might have to change it I think a lot of the teams that have come up have found this league difficult because they've tried to do the same things they did last year in this league and no disrespect but there's full-time teams in this in this division there's fitter players that dedicate their lives to mm. one thing and that's football there's not people having two jobs like in the National League South or North so it's going to be different and there's levels in these leagues, you know. There's actually levels, like, even the league, the, the level above. I was saying this to Femi yesterday. Everyone's always talking about, oh, yeah, there's no difference between uh, the National League and League Two. No, there is. Mm. There actually is. Like, so let's stop pretending, because everyone was being disrespectful. And yeah, Wrexham and Notts County are going to walk that league. Listen, they're both not doing as well as... They're both in the top half, yes. But they're not walking it by no means. So let's not, let's not um, downplay the levels, man. That's not I do want Oxford to 
to prove me wrong. I don't, because I don't like 3G pitches. <laughs> the less 3G pitches, the better. So Oldham, I mean, not Oldham, sorry. Oxford, uh, Dorkin, you guys, please, I beg, man. Get, get some grass. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, as a coach, you've got your style. He might think to himself, do you know what? I'm not changing my style for no one. If we get relegated, I don't want to get stay up by playing a certain brand of football that I do not want to watch. Um, Sometimes fam, it might just need a couple of players. That's just going to make the difference. A couple of signings and it might just change everything. Yeah, you never it know. Isn't it? it might. It might. But let's move on anyway. Let's move on. Um, Femi, our game yesterday against my old team, Maidenhead United. Um, we played them four times the last four years, beat them each and every time, 1-0. Normal business resumed yesterday. Erico scored a penalty. Uh, but in fairness to Maidenhead, they've changed the way they play. They're a lot more ball-based. They try to get the ball down. They try to play. Um, Devish has really changed in his old age, and I mean that in the most respectful way. Um, they, I thought they played really well yesterday. I thought we kept their uh, best player in the family George quiet, and that was a big um, plus for us. Um, I thought Femi played really well. I thought... Uh, the back three, excellent. David Abontahoma in particular was immense. A player that's got a big future in the game. Um, and the return of Pabs and Ty up front. Manny, you're going to enjoy watching these two play, bro. You enjoy it because they're both about five foot five, but they're strong, they're quick, they're smart. They've got everything, man. And it's no coincidence that Cabs comes in and we win both games. So... Long may it continue. Um, Femi, your thoughts on the game? Yeah, it was, it was a good win. It was a good win. Um, I would say a game of two halves. Do you know what I like about um, Alan Devonshire, yeah? He's, he's, he's evolving. Like like you said, he's still evolving. And you never stop learning. You never stop growing. And he could easily be stubborn, stuck in his ways. I've had a great career. I've had a great management career as well as playing career. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do, you know. But no, you know, he's actually evolving and moving with the times. And with that, he's blooming and blossoming some a great crop of players. You know, you've got Smith, um, Nathaniel, you know what I mean? Um, Nathaniel George, you got, um, what's the other one I didn't play? See, oh, um, I know Mitchell, I was interested to play Lawrence. against Lawrence. No, Mitchell Lawson. Mitchell Lawson. Mitchell Lawson sorry, yeah. You got, you got um Petit. Petit's good, you know. Petit's really good. Petit's really hey, Remy Camara in midfield was an absolute madness, by the way. He looked brand new as well. He looked brand hey. new. Manny, know? you play midfield because see what Remy was doing yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> good. So, you got you got good. Um, attacking-minded fullbacks as well, Vasari and Beckwith. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just beautiful to see, because we all know what Maidenhead was like three, four years ago. You know, it was nobody wants to go there. Hate playing against Maidenhead. We know what it's gonna be, but now <laughs> they were getting the ball and passing and ball travelers, ball carriers, and it was, it was, it was, it was good. So, and. Bro, they're having, a, they're having a really good season. They're having a really good season. That that win yesterday, we managed to leapfrog them, you know, but they've been they've been solid all year round. They've been solid all year round. So um, it's gonna be I think it'll be hard to keep hold of some of those players in the summer. Yeah. It's maidenhead. They 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 will do it again. They've had Josh Kelly and they had to go and, you know what I mean people go recruitment and wise, recruitment wise, they do really, really well, don't they? They do really well and and, and they've kind of and they kind of understand that that these players ain't gonna be here forever. Yeah. So it's the next one in the door, you know. And no aqua's gone, but they put a Toby Show Silver. Like that's what they do in it. And it worked and and yes, yeah, so I'm sure they're not too worried. This it's, it's good for them. I think I think they're happy about it. No, for sure, for sure. Um looking at the team that looked like they're running away with it, obviously, 23 points clear, 18 wins on the bounce. Probably expected Chesterfield to win yesterday against Edfleet who are in 23rd. But in actual fact, they didn't. They drew. Um, so they couldn't get that 19th win. But 19 goals for Will Grigg. 
Armando Dobra popping up the goal. Um, Rakesh Bingham opened up the scoring, to be fair. And Chapman scored the late equaliser. One thing about uh, Chesterfield, someone told me that they're 1-0 down. I was like, oh, they'll, they'll score. They'll score a goal sooner or later. And they scored two in 30 minutes. Uh, sorry, in four minutes. 30th minute and the 34th minute. Manny, talk to me about this team, man. What have you seen from them? Impressed? Are you thinking that's what they should be doing? What's your thoughts? No, I think I am impressed, you know, but I'm I'm more impressed with like their character, as you as you said, like we were two 0 up against them and then they came back and won three two in like the dying minutes of the game. And like every time we play them, they're just quite a resilient team. They're like very organized, very well structured. Um they've got a few good personnel, like a few good players. But then like say a few. Yeah, no, nah, they've got a good yeah, they've got a good team there. Yeah, they've got they've got a good 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 squad. Right, that's the best way to say it. They've got a good squad. <laughs> Do you think their style of play is like really, really good? Yes. Do you know why I think they're really good? Oh. They've not got one style. They uh, got, they got yeah. three you. Oh, up top or will okay. great. They change how they play. I have a director. Yeah. They can, like they can go through you, they can go around you. Mm. They can go over you. Mm. Do, do you know what? Yeah. I want to unpack what Manny's saying, honestly. Let's let's unpack it because I understand. I think I know where you're going with this, Manny. Mm. Style of play. How important is <laughs> how important is style of play to you? Let me just get let me let me ask you that first and foremost. How important is that to you? I think it is, it is important, but I think the effect and the, the effectiveness of the style of play is the most important, really and truly. So, so if your style of play is you hit channels where like Woking, you guys have done it as well, Maidenhead have done it, but they've hit channels and they've played it so well, I think it's sick. That's your style of play, but it's effective. Like Chesterfield, if you're talking about ball playing, like even Brexham last season, their style of play weren't the best. Yeah. But it was mad effective. Get yeah. balls into the box, throwing and everything. Notts County had the best style of play for me, but and it was very effective. So they had the combination of both personnel and style of play and effectiveness. So style of play is important. I'm not trying to downplay Chesterfield's thing and say, oh, no, 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 you not the best then... no. Do you know why? Because I'm going to agree with you. On okay. The... Yeah. I'm actually going to agree with you, but I like what you said about your style of play has got to be effective. Now, you look at managers recently that have moved. You started off with Luke Williams. Mm. County, his style of play. The Gates said, we ain't even got to talk too much about Gates. said, we already know what they they they, they done, you know. Um, Stuart Maynard. And and I wanna I wanna I wanna dive into this one a little bit because this is where effective style of play, you reap the rewards. You know what I'm saying? Um, Stuart Maynard, everyone knows Wallstone have a great mm. philosophy, the way they play football, play out the back and whatnot. And with his limited resources, I say that in the most respectful way, limited, the part-time, you know what I mean? He's managed to show how effective his style of play can be if given the right resources, which led him moving on to you know, um, Notts County, which led players getting moves. Josh Amera moving to um, Hartlepool. You have Omaola moving to Bromley. You have Trevor Campbell, Campbell moving to Solihull. So players mm. do crack on from Wildstone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But the effectiveness is very, very important because Chesterfield are actually walking this league. Mm. Now, their style of play is nowhere near Gateshead style of play. Yeah? Yeah. Bro, and like 30 points clear. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm true. trying to say that. How important is it? Because, because the yeah, 30 points true. clear. Yeah, it's, it's, true. it's Paul Cook. Yes, he is even going to get a move. If, if Paul Cook wanted to move, he could get a move off of this season. Yeah. I'm going to see Paul Cook going to get a move. But, but yes, your 30 points clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm trying to say how important is it that we're, on a scale of 1 to 10, mm. where do you rank it? Because, bro, I agree with you. 
Mm. Like, just before they're not Gateshead and they're not Lost County, but they're 30 points clear. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one to, to, to rate without the effectiveness, though. So I think it, it has to be dependent on how effective it is. So your style of play can be shit, but if, sorry for using that word, your style of play can be very bad, <laughs> so you know the viewers, your style of play can be very bad, but if it's effective, that's fine. At the end of the day, you want to win games, but um, if a style of play is good and ineffective, like certain teams, then like, is, is it really worth it? You're better off changing your style of play. So I would say it's dependent. It's a hard one to just give it a, a rating out of 10. It's all dependent on how effective it is, you know. That's sitting on the fence a bit, but I think... No, no, it's very, it's very hard because I'm even struggling to answer it. Like, Jamal, what's your thoughts? Um, it comes down to your philosophy. It comes down to your philosophy and what you... How you want... it. What do you want? Do you want results? Or do you want to improve yourself and players? You know, do you want fans to come through the turnstiles and enjoy what they see or do you just want them to see a win? You know, that's what it all comes down to. So um, even like I've done various coaching badges and we have that conversation often where it's like I've, I've been with coaches that all they want to do is win. They don't care how it looks. And if you're trying to get to a certain place, is it the process that you go with or is it the destination? Like what is, what's the, what's the end goal? Mm. That's what you have to look at. For me, I'd have to go with a bit of both. Like how, how, who are we playing? What does, how does the game, what does the game look like? Like what am I trying to get out of this game? The players at my disposal, there's so many different factors to it, you know? So I think I'm more leaning towards the, um, I just want to win. Mm. But at the same time, there's certain players in certain positions that I need to see something from you. You know, like, I want to see players express themselves and have fun. I don't want to just see... I don't want players to do what they think they should do. So, start, I'm sitting on the fence as well, but it's it's tough, man. It's a tough one. You know, you know, I hear you fully, Jamal, but I think it all comes down to trust in the process. Yeah. A, yeah. Um, now... Trust in the process. You might go through a rocky spell. You might not get results. You might, do you know what I mean? But if you trust that process, and the best example I can use is Gates, because they did it. Of them, trusting your process could get you sacked. Yeah. The thing. So, but that's the thing now. The pressure, because you're trusting your process, but the pressure of, I've got to deliver on these results. Hey, Tim, the mortgage payments, it's not it's, about trusting that process, bro. It's so... It's the, so school, the nursery fees, it's not about trusting the, the car payment. Sometimes, fam. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Like, you know what I mean? You want to trust the process, but then you might not be getting... Then the, the board is leaning on you like, we've lost four games in a row. Like, what process is this? Like, do, do, do you know what I mean? It's so hard to get the balance. and That's the key. That's the key as well. Having the right people in the background that are on the same wavelength. Because if you're a, res a results-based board with a process-based manager, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? It just uh, added in on that. So I remember a few years ago when I was at West Ham, well, several years ago now, when Sam Allardyce um, was the manager there and he survived relegation, and then the next season, he came like top 10 and he got sacked. Mm. But coming top 10 for West Ham is a big deal. Do you get what I'm saying? They got Europa League and then he still got sacked because of the, he's starting to play. Like West Ham wanted to move towards playing more attractive football for the fans and whatnot. And hence, the West Ham is how they are today. But they, yeah. They're still like that though, Manny. They're still like that though. If you talk to, I've got, I'm from East London, so I've got a good, a lot of East, um, West Ham fans and, they won a European Cup last year, but because of their style of play, they still want David Moyes out. Yeah. So, style of play is everything. And even looking at the next two teams that we're going to talk about here, Dorkin and Halifax, two contrasting styles. Dorkin um, lost that game 3-1. Halifax won that 3-1 uh, winners. Um, Max Wright bagging a brace on Oluwabi, scoring a goal. Charlie Carter popping out of another goal, which is no less than a consolation. Um, fam, talk to me, Dawkin. What are you what, what are you thinking about them? They they're, they're not having the season that I would have expected. Last year, they their man their manager slash chairman slash owner slash Kitty spender for the 
for the uh, pubs and the fans, what a guy he is. But he was he used to batter his defence, and it seemed as though he got it right, but it seems as though they've slipped back into their old ways. Yeah, um, we played Dorking a couple of weeks ago, and they, they trumped us, you know. They trumped us. Uh, it, but, but this league is so crazy. It's so crazy because that, like, the, the, the bottom four is looking different now. Like, Dorkin have now dropped into the relegation zone. You know what I mean? And they haven't really been... They are. They might have been a couple of points away from it, but they ain't really been in it all season. So now, like, in the final third of the season, soon approaching fourth quarter of the season, this is where you're at. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, it's, and it wasn't expected. I don't even think they, were, they expected this. Kidderminster threw a spanner in the works when they just won four games on the bounce. Yeah, like Kiddy and Farl just said, you know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> enough. They said enough. We're not going to no more. That's what I give. Like, literally that, yeah. And now it's just crazy. Like, it's just dragged loads of other teams in it, you know? And I don't even think this is going to be... I think it's going to change again, if I'm being honest with you. It's going to change a couple of times. Because this league is just crazy. Like, entertainment of the playoff. Top seven's been changing every year, um, every every week. Like the bottom four is going to be changing every week as well. So, and that that Dorkin, Dorkin for sure. Like, like all right, you're in it now, but look, the season's not ending tomorrow, in it. They still got um, fifteen games to go. So, so yeah, like, but they need to move fast. That's what I will say. With Halifax, um, steady season, man, steady season. Halifax doing what they do in it. Do you know what I mean? Um, getting their results together. They always just go about, every year, Halifax go about their business very, very quietly. You know, they don't make too much noise. You know, they've got, they they they, they work hard. They're a hardworking team. You know what I mean? And it's never really, other than um, Melanie Ali, who just moved to XR, they're not known for, oh, this one player is this. No, they work well as a team. They're actually a team. You know what I mean? And, um, they're, they're, they're reaping the rewards, man. They're reaping the rewards. There are two points outside of the playoffs. Um, that's three and three for Max Wright as well. So he's he, he's picked up some form as well. So we'll see how their season ends. Yeah, and just watching on what you just said there about the league, fam. This is why Rob Edwards, in his speech to his Luton Town, Rob Edwards, manager of Luton Town in the Premier League, from I I remember playing Luton in 2011, the playoff final um, for the conference, and we beat them at York. And now look at them flying. But that's why he said in his speech to his squad that John still got the most important and the most difficult promotion. And he was talking about the one from the National League because this league, it's not easy. One go up automatic, one through the playoffs. It's just the hardest thing to get out of. So, yeah, Fem, I, I, I'm in total agreement with you. The bottom four is going to look very different once again. I really think, I don't think we're out of it. Um, I yeah. think that's the best mindset to have. Um, but that's a roundup of the games. Not many left. Not many left. It's been a crazy. It's, fast, it's crazy how fast the season's gone. But um, coming on to the next part of the show, Manny, where we talk about um, the best advice you've received um, throughout your career, but also, or not also, or um, the advice that you could give someone that you wish you had when you was a youngster. Um, best advice that I've received was control the controllables. <clears throat> so it's just quite straightforward. Um, like you can only do what's in your control. So yeah. like yeah. a lot of times you try and control external factors, especially being in the team sport, you can't control what the other player's gonna do. You can't control what your teammates gonna do. You can't control so many things. If, are you gonna get picked for the match? Are you gonna do whatever? You can't control that. All you can control is what's in your control, which is to be the best you can possibly be, get the right sleep, eat right, train right, have a positive positive attitude and the rest will be what will be will be what will be will be. So that's one of the, um, the biggest advice and the best advice that I've got. And it just helps me like mentally. So like stressing myself. How how often do you get anxious or stressed about things that are outside your control? Is this gonna happen? Is that gonna happen? So it's just um yeah, like very important just control what you can control and what will be will be. And it's just helped me mentally to to get by really. I have a massive belief in controlling the controllables. Massive believer in it. 
I love that. I love that. Fem, that's the kind of advice that we've probably heard um, as well. And the one we've given as well. So it's definitely something that everyone can use. Um, but again, coming on to the next part now is the word of the week. Now, the word of the week is something that we take into tomorrow and gets us through. Even if we're having a good one or we're having an indifferent one, this is a little something that we can remind ourselves um, throughout the week. So, Fem, do you want to kick it off? And then I'll go next and man, I'll give you some time to think of one. Yeah, um, the word I'm gonna word of the week this week I'm gonna use is learn. Um, you can never stop learning. You can never stop learning. Mandy, you're using your experience right now. You're not in the team, but you're using it as a learning experience. You know, um, that's one thing that you should never ever stop doing. The moment you think that you've cracked it is the moment you're in trouble. If I'm being honest with you. So always be a sponge. Always learn from different experiences. If you take a loss, learn from. If you take a, if you if you win, learn from your experience of winning. You know what I mean. Even yesterday, um, I missed I missed a missed a chance. You know, <laughs> but I'm talking to my assistant manager after the game, and. I've learned from it immediately. Next time I'm in that position, I need to make sure this is. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just learned. It's no, no excuse. You just. But the only way to learn from your experiences is by holding yourself accountable. You know, and that's the only way you're gonna learn. So, but it's, it's, it's too important. It's too important because when you learn it, it propels you forward in the long term. So I would say learn. That's my word of the week. I like that. I like that, fam. I do like that word. Um, and yeah, you should have scored. You should have scored. I'm, unha I'm unhappy. Manny, I'm, a, I, I'm more pissed off than Femi is because as he's about to shoot, I see it building up. I see Femi come out of the back stick. I'm at the dugout now and I'm ready to run on the pitch and celebrate. This guy goes and puts it wide. I'm just like, bro, it's just, it's just jarring, Femi, man. It's just jarring. And, and if, I, can't, I can't want it more than you, Femi. Well, learned from the experience. This no, is I mean, Manny. No, yeah. I'm not even. I'm not even letting you have that one because. No, you, no, what's so crazy? You learn, isn't it? So next time, I'm. I won't miss. Because right. I know what to do. Hey, Manny's the witness. Manny's the witness. Manny's the witness. Look, look comp, listen, Manny. I don't remember that one. Was right. The ball came in fast. I kept it low. Everything low. Only thing I messed up body position. That's all it was. The uh, way he was facing, that's where the ball went. I was outside of the back stick. Mm. So it went wide. I should have been facing the goal. If I was facing the goal, the contact was right. I would have gone in the goal. That's yeah. it. So I, I learned from it. No excuses. Man's going to learn to move on. It won't happen again. Good. Good. Um, so my word of the week is create your world. And just to expand on that, it's creating a life that you're happy with. Um, like, and that's just through your thoughts that's just through your way of living um, creating a creating a space for yourself that you're content with man so whether it's reading whether it's how you eat whether it's how you sleep it's all in your power it's all in your your creation so create the life that you're happy with man um, so I'm trying to create a life that I enjoy so whether that's me enjoying the fruits of my labour whether that's me going to the gym in the morning, eating right, reading the right books, that's going to get my mind right. Like Manny, you said there, I think earlier you said about um, you're into property. So that's you creating a life that you're happy with and that you want to see for yourself. And I even want to even expand on that as well. Um, but that's my word of the week. But talk me through that, that part of your life and, and where it came from as well. Yeah, so I've, like from a young age, I've always been interested in property. Um, so growing up in Peckham, South East London, um, sh like shared a flat, lived in a flat with my brothers and my parents and whatnot, shared a room with my brother, my brothers. So like growing up, I've always like one of my own room. So like, like you'd see it on TV, on channels that you watch or like friends in school. Oh yeah, I've got my own room. I've got my own room. And like as a kid, it sounds so petty, but as a kid, it's just like, I had to share my room my whole life, like with like two of my other brothers and whatnot. 
<laughs> you, know <what> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then when I went off to uni, and then I think I ended up, yeah, sharing, um, having my own room at the age of, how old was I? Probably like 16, I think, when they all like gone off to uni and like moved out of the house and whatnot. So then from a young age, I've always been like into property, you know, um, but I've been wanting to get into it. I just didn't know how. So like, I didn't have like an uncle or like a dad and who's had properties, you know, like some people are blessed and fortunate to have um, someone in their family who owns properties who can guide them. Yeah. So I didn't have none of that. So like, I just started watching YouTube. I started researching. Like, I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And mm. one of the biggest things that I would advise everyone is do it. Like that's one of the things that I said. So there's a lot of planning. Oh, I want to do this. And I want to do that. I want to just do it. Like take that step and you're going to make mistakes, but that's how you learn and that's how you do it. So I just started um, learning about property, like researching, uh, reading books, like watching YouTube. And eventually um, I, I got my first property with my brother and then just started snowballing like that and started learning like ways to do it. Because I'm not earning a significant amount of money, like played in National League League 2. So like, I sacrificed um, partying and sacrificed spending money on so many things that a lot of people my age enjoyed and did and saved that and put it into property because that was my passion outside of football and I've just gone down that route and just carried on. Obviously there is a balance in it, I'm not saying don't live your life, enjoy your life, but and I've just like gone on the route on that and just researched a lot of property. And up north is more affordable. So I then learned about that and living up north helped me open my eyes to see I can afford a property. And a lot of people in London can afford properties, you just don't know it. People think, oh, I live in London, so I can't buy a property, I'm done. That's it, that's door closed, oh, I can't afford it. How much do you have on your account? Oh, I've got 15K, I can't afford a property in London. But 15K can buy your property up north, you didn't know that. Mm. Like, you work from home, you can you can buy a property up north, and yeah, there's ways around it. So yeah, just equipping myself with that and learning. So that's how I just went down that route. I love that, I love that. And congrats for getting on a property ladder as well. That's something that needs to be celebrated as well. That's dope. That's dope. Um, but yeah, talk, talk us through your word of the week, Manny. Um, my word of the week is do more. Okay. Um, so like in, in life, we always, we, we want more. So we, we want to be in a better position. We want whatever it is that we want. Just do, do more to get there. So there, there's always more you can do. So it's like, what's that quote I used to say to myself? It's, it's not over. I can't remember what it is now, but. Yeah, just do more to get there. So whatever it is, you can always do more. Um, don't be, oh, I'm doing enough, I'm doing enough. No, you can do more. If it is, I need to work on my left foot, do more after training. Like, I need to get stronger, do more in the gym. Um, I need to get smarter, revise more, like, learn more. Like, do, if it's, I need to be more stress-free, then do things that's going to help you to get to where you need to get to. So, um, yeah, that's probably my word of the week, just do more. And that's personal to me because... Uh, I want to get my ankles st stronger and get into the team to do more, like do more in the gym and, and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. So, let me had learn. My name was do more and mine was create. I think those are three great words, man. I think those are three great words. Um, I think this has been a dope episode as well. Manny, I think you might be the most mature and wise 27-year-old <laughs> man in a long time, you know. 100%. At the start, fam, he was preaching. At the start, fam, he was preaching. He sounded like he was preaching. Then he spoke about his faith. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And now he's talking about this property. He's talking about do more. And I said, Jesus, this guy, <laughs> 27 or 37, one of the two, man. He let us know from the minute we started this that this is a serious man. He's a serious character, bro. Serious. <laughs> you, oh, you got anything to add, though, fam? No, it's been an it's been an amazing episode, Manny. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed I it. Did. More yeah. than, more than. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your time. Wish you nothing but the best. You and the family. Um, thanks for coming on and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, and yeah, man, it's been an amazing, another amazing episode. We've only we ain't got many left, man. We ain't got many left. We ain't got many left. We ain't got many left. So we've got to do. What, what, who have we done? We need to do. You know what? I really wanted. Um, I was. I was going to say to you, Manny, Nicky Featherstone. He's mm. he's the kind of guy with the knowledge he's had. I think that like four hundred or something appearances for Hartlepool. Yeah. 
Um, I want to get Phil Brown on. Fam. I need to pick his brain about how he went from a club to what made him go to the club at bottom of the league and how he managed to get them four wins on a the bounce. There's so many, fam. I want to get Will Grigg. Um, I want Dobra. <laughs> I want everyone. Yeah. There's a lot of questions. A lot of questions. But yeah, no, this has been a great episode. But Fem, round us up. Now, uh, guys, thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, you know what I mean? Show a friend. Let's just help push this show in this amazing episode as much as we can. No, I appreciate you both having me, man. Honestly, thank you. Thank you both for having me. All right. That's goodbye from me anyway, guys. Enjoy. Hey, Nigeria, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, enjoy, fellas. Thanks for watching.